السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To bless them all and to bless every single one of us To grant us goodness My beloved brothers and sisters once again it is only an honor and a pleasure to meet this beautiful ummah and this beautiful community, the community of Bosmont. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and grant you all goodness and the same for the rest of the ummah. Amen. You and I know that we are all part of one family. Somewhere up the ladder, you know that we belong to a single set of parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. Now, today... If you were told who is this person sitting next to you and if that person was your real brother, you would, I think in most cases, be honored to say this is my brother, one mother, one father. And you would then be told, oh, he looks like you. Wow, I can see the similarity. And then you would say, well, you know, the apples don't really fall far from the tree or whatever else you would say, showing that you are connected. We all have similarities. We all have eyes, noses, you know, lips, teeth, hands, the head where it is and so on. We are all part of the same species. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept even more similarities where you would know if you come from a specific area and your roots have been there for many years, perhaps you will be connected to people, a connection that you might not exactly know how, but you do know we are connected somehow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Why do I start like this? To show you that all of us are family. We all need to have a genuine feeling for one another. We will never ever be the same in what, how we think, in our likes, our dislikes, in perhaps sometimes our inclinations, etc. We may disagree. Sometimes we may strongly disagree, just like we do with real brothers. How many of us have real brothers and sisters whom we strongly disagree with? It's possible. But there is no need to become ugly, my beloved brothers and sisters. I would like to spend the next few moments speaking about the etiquettes of difference of opinion and how we should be treating one another, bearing in mind we all come from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ O oh people, be conscious of your Rabb, the one who made you, nourishes you, cherishes, sustains, provides, protects. Be conscious of your Rabb who has created you from a single soul and from that soul its spouse. And from the two of them he caused a multitude of male and female to beam or to spread across the earth. Subhanallah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujurat, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا He starts off by saying, O oh people, we have created you from a single male and a female, and we have made you into nations and peoples in order that you may know one another, you may recognize one another. The differences you have in color, only to recognize one another. The differences you have in features, only to recognize one another. Because if everyone was to be created identical, you would not be able to recognize one another. So to make it interesting, Allah made one tall, one short, the other one a little bit this way, that way, dark and light and so on. Notice I didn't say fat and thin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Well, now I said it. So my brothers and sisters, what's of importance is to know Allah doesn't like you. Allah doesn't say that He doesn't like you, sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say He doesn't like you because of how you are or because of where you were born or because of your complexion. The same applies to every one of us. We cannot hate someone. We cannot dislike them based on their nationality, based on, and when I say nationality, I mean coincidence of birth. I was born perhaps in a country, say I'm a Zimbabwean. It doesn't mean that because Z is right at the bottom of the alphabet, now we don't like this guy anymore. That's it. It doesn't mean that. 
It was not my fault that I was born there. It was Allah's choice. That's why some people argue, no, nationality is something that's man-made. We're not supposed to be looking at it. Exactly. You're not supposed to be discriminating based on someone's nationality. There could be an American who's a better Muslim than someone who's a Saudi Arabian. It's possible. There could be a person who's a Saudi Arabian who's a better Muslim than someone who's a South African and vice versa. So it's got nothing to do with your nationality. Your closeness unto Allah. Allah says, Inna The most honored of you are those who are most conscious of Allah. So whoever, even if it means a brother or a sister from the depth of Soweto or Kailicha or wherever else we would pro- perhaps consider the people may not be wealthy, they might be struggling in their in the way they are living, but they could be closer to Allah than all of us put together. It can happen. So remember this. Also, what is of interest to note is what counts is how you die, not necessarily how you started off. The race, I could have been running very fast at the beginning, but I slowed down near the end. And what happened? Everyone else overtook me and I lost. So you don't judge people, you always have hope, even our own children, may Allah protect us all. Imagine someone's children or child happens to fall into drugs and alcohol and you condemn them to the degree that you leave the light of coming back very dim or you extinguish it. That would be foolish. You may want to take measures that would perhaps result in them knowing you are not happy with what's going on. You may want to take measures, but... You don't turn off the light to the degree that you say, this is hopeless, khalas, it's over and gone. you no longer my child forever and ever. I don't ever want to see you again. Who are you? Allah blessed you with that child at the beginning as a test. I, I'm not saying don't deal with the problem. Don't get me wrong. You deal with it, but you remember at the end of the day, you have hope if the child comes back repentant or anyone for that matter comes back repentant, it shall be accepted by Allah before you. So who are you to reject it? The same applies. We make mistakes. You know, no matter what, we all make mistakes. I cannot hate a person because of a mistake they have made. Rather, I dislike the mistake, but I have hope in the person. I might want to stay away from the person if the damage of that particular bad habit of theirs can affect me too. I may want to say, look, you know what? I don't like this person's habit. So therefore, I'm going to stay away from that because I don't want to be affected by it. But I still have hope. Inshallah, may Allah bless them. And may Allah help me in my own weaknesses. The reason is a lot of people think, you know what? That guy's a drunkard, but I don't have weaknesses. No, we have other types of weaknesses. Remember this. So we need to help one another. We need to have hope with one another. How a person passes away is how they will be resurrected according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you pass away in a good condition, even if you've led your whole life in a bad way, that was the will of Allah. That was some goodness you might have done. And Allah gave you goodness. It was husnul khatima, meaning you ended your life in a beautiful way. You won the race. But if you started your life in a beautiful way and you died with a bottle in the hand, only Allah knows what he's going to do to you. But you and I would know that that type of an ending is something no one would like. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So this is why my brothers and sisters learn to respect one another. Learn to understand. When you have a problem with someone, you don't throw the whole person away. You might want to protect yourself from that matter and you will try and assist as best as you can. If you cannot assist, the minimum is you make dua for them. And like I said, you are allowed to stay away. But you don't throw the whole person away. You continue having hope. You know, when the child has messed, for example... What do you do? You throw the whole child away. Imagine the child is missed. And here I'm talking about the nappy. So you say, hey, this child's missed, just throw him in the bin. <laughs> Come on. You can't do that. You will go and remove the nappy, change it, clean it, and you still love the child and kiss the child. On top of that, subhanallah. But what happened? There was a mess, a very bad one. The child might have even missed you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. You love your child. Why? Connected to the child. So remember this, if there is a scratch on the motor vehicle, it might reduce the value of the vehicle, but you don't throw the car away. And if you want to, please, I'll give you my phone number afterwards, you can call me, subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, what is meant is your car will be scratched, whether you buy a new one or whether it was scratchless. It will be scratched at some point, somehow, small or big. There's going to be some form of usage which will result in definitely wearing and tearing a scratch here and there. It doesn't mean that you throw the car away because of the scratch. 
The same applies to us amongst ourselves. We all have scratches. These scratches are different. Some people have something bigger. And some people have something smaller. Some people have things that affect us. Some people have things that affect other people, not us. So does it mean that we now need to throw people away just because of a scratch? No. Maybe the value might decrease. When I say value might decrease, for us, we need to understand in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the habit that is bad that the person has is what we will consider as bad. But we will always know if Allah wants, He can make this person become better than me and make me become worse than this person. And we've seen examples. We've seen people who started off very holy, so holy that the same holes they fell into. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And we've seen others, they started off in the, in the pit and they became pious. They came out and they became people who don't miss a salah. So learn to respect one another. My brothers and sisters, it's a very important point. I want to read for you part of a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبًا When you utter, you need to be just in your utterances, even if it is a relative. In what context is this verse made mention of? Let me tell you. For example, this man is my real brother. One mother, one father. Just an example. And then he has a problem with someone else. He has stolen someone's wealth. He has robbed. He has cheated. He has done wrong. What do I do? I come... And I say, no, he's a good man. That man is bad. Just because he's my brother, I sided with him. And I said words that were wrong, but in order to defend my brother. You follow what we're saying? So I said, no, no, he's right. You guys are wrong. You guys are jealous of him. You guys are this. You guys are that. And what happened? I know I'm lying, but I need to stand up because we believe blood is thicker than water in some of our communities. Yet in Islam, that's not the case. In Islam, blood might be thicker than water, but your deen is neither water nor blood. It is something beyond. Remember this. So the deen will be thicker than blood, and blood may be thicker than water, depending on what you think water is. So remember this. So my brothers and sisters, I will stand up for you, even if it happens to be against myself, or my own family members, or someone influential, or someone else altogether. I will stand up for what is right and just. That's what Allah is telling you. If it is right, it's right. The small boy can be right. And the man who is wealthy, influential, knowledgeable sometimes can be wrong. We all make mistakes. I told you, there are scratches everywhere. I need to be Muslim enough to say, my brother, as little as this boy in front of you is, I have to say he's right. That's a Muslim. Notice what I said. We have to be Muslim enough to do that. That's when you're a proper Muslim. Similarly, and I want to tell you something else, extremely important. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Don't ever let your dislike of a nation or a people make you be unjust towards them. Let me give you an example of that. So there's a certain nationality, for example, that I don't like. If I say that and I think that, for example, I am already a person who needs to work on his iman. Like I told you, you can't just hate people. Or there's a certain family. I don't like this family. Hey, these guys are crooks. They are, you added everyone, including the unborn children. Do you know that? I don't like this family. Watch out for them. There's a certain tribe or a clan. I don't like these people. These are words that people utter that are dangerous. But Allah says, even if for some reason you dislike some people, maybe you've had a bad example. Be just with them as well. At the time of war, the Prophet ﷺ used to be just, totally just. He did not harm anyone who put their weapons down. He didn't harm women and children. He didn't harm those who were not involved, not at all. He didn't harm them at all. And he said, anyone who puts down their weapon is safe. Subhanallah. And he fulfilled that. He made sure it happened. If a Muslim attacked a non-Muslim who wasn't involved or who had put their weapons down, immediately the Prophet ﷺ admonished the Muslim. 
It doesn't mean that if a Muslim and a non-Muslim have a problem, then every time the Muslim is right and the non-Muslim is wrong. Get that out of your system. That's, that's a wrong idea. If a Muslim and a non-Muslim have had a dispute, justice, the truth, what is right, will prevail. That is where you need to stand, no matter who it's with. That is how the non-Muslims will see the beauty of the deen. These people are just. That's what the Quran is saying. When you dislike people, when you have a difference with someone, don't just bombard them because of that. Everything. You threw away the whole car because there was a scratch. But that was a, subhanallah, let's make it a bit more interesting. That was an S65 AMG. It just had a little scratch and you threw it away. Are you foolish? There are people amongst us who are as valuable as the S65 AMG. I promise you. And we throw them away because of one scratch. And we say, this guy is an idiot. Don't listen to him. This guy is someone else. Don't go and do business with him. This guy is this. Don't this. That guy is a revert or a convert. Don't even go near. This guy is like this. Don't get married to him. Watch out for a scratch. For a scratch. Yes, if the car is a write-off, it's another issue. My brothers and sisters, you need to know. But even then, we, we should understand there is value. There is underlying value. I recall a friend of mine who's a panel beater. There was a car written off. He looked at it and he told me, don't worry, we'll rebuild this thing. Wallahi, in a few months, he rebuilt it and he brought it back. Subhanallah. So sometimes amongst us, there are some people whom some might consider a write-off, but a leader and a champion will have hope and they will say, you know what, I'll work on him. Don't worry, give me one or two years. If Allah wills, it's going to happen. And if Allah doesn't will, even if the champion of champions works on him, nothing's going to come. There are some people who look at the positives in the most negative situation. And some people, there is nothing negative, but they create negativity out of nothing in order to feel depressed and depress other people. Watch out, my brothers and sisters. Be careful. Let's understand, become positive people. The ummah is bleeding. You know why? Because for one scratch and for one difference, we're throwing away entire communities. That's what we're doing. Let's build bridges rather than burn them, blow them up, throw them out. We're going to need them to cross, my brothers and sisters. Remember this. So this is why these two very important verses. One is do not side with your relative. Speak just. Be just. Speak justice even if it means against your own relative. And the second verse is speak the truth even if it means for your enemy. Look at the two. Someone I don't like. Someone has stolen my money, right? So it doesn't mean he stole everybody's money. If someone stole my money, I have a case against him or I have something, you know, to resolve between the two of us. But when I see him doing business with someone else and there's a deal that happened, I cannot just draw a conclusion when I see that, mashallah, he's bought a new car, he's bought a new house. And I just say, you know what, this guy must have stolen other people's monies. That's my sickness. I know that what happens nowadays and it's been happening for the last 20 years. When you see a young person or an elderly person, suddenly Allah blessed them with sustenance and they work very hard and they happen to buy a car. They, they actually think 20 times before they buy a new car because they're worried, what's the, my neighbor going to think about this? But they end up buying it because the hadith says, أثر نعمة الله عليك. When Allah has blessed you with wealth, He wants to see it on you. Make use of it. Don't be stingy, miserly. So when someone sees you, they should immediately know, MashaAllah, this person's got... A little bit at least. Allah has blessed them. But the way you talk must show that you are as humble as ever. Subhanallah. So you might have a perfume that can be smelt before you are seen. MashaAllah. But that doesn't mean your character must become ugly. You are humble. You come greet everyone. Greet whoever you can at least. Smile at them. Be good to them. Kind to them. And when someone ignores you. I'm going to just pause for a moment here. When, when someone ignores you. And it happens nowadays. The age of the mobile phone, something very interesting happens. People are busy on their phones, right? So what happens is, you greet a man, Salaamu Alaikum. He looks you in the face and he walks away. And you start saying, this man is very bad. He ignored me. But this poor man, his mind was occupied. He just read a message and he was thinking so deep about it that he did not notice you. Wallahi, it happens to a lot of people. And we thought bad. So one is, I need to greet us. Whoever I can, I need to be exemplary. But when someone else is not exemplary, do not jump to a conclusion that this person is bad. No, find an excuse for them. You know what? He's so occupied. 
Next time when you talk to him, brother, are you sure everything's okay? He says, yes, it is. Are you sure? He says, what do you mean? They're going to ask you, what do you mean? He says, you know what? You, I thought you must have been so stressed because I passed you, I greeted you, you just ignored me. But in my mind, I said, this man must be occupied. And he might know, he might not know what exactly happened. Hey, my brother, please excuse me. I really, I didn't notice. Excuse them. We are part of one family. That's how I started the talk. Excuse them. So going back to what I was saying, my brothers and sisters, remember the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have hope in every single human being because we draw our hope from Allah ultimately. You do not lose hope. Your job and my job on earth is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to earn as many rewards as I can before I die. Allah kept it such that a lot of my rewards are connected to how I treat or deal with or interact with the other human beings. A lot of my rewards are connected to that. That's why salah, zakah, and these type of ibadah, they are also connected to a certain extent to human beings. Let me give you an example. When you come for salah, the hadith says, make sure your mouth is not smelling, make sure you are not smelling foul, etc. Why? Because there are other people going to be there. Look at how it's connected. When you're giving zakah, if there were no poor people, what was going to happen to your money? Keep it. Imagine if everyone was rich, may Allah grant us wealth. Amin. Wow, that was quite a nice loud amin. <laughs> so I tell you something. Imagine if everyone was wealthy and the, the richest of the lot says, Hey, guy, I'm giving you a million. He says, I'll give you two million. What are you giving me a million for? Keep your million. There's going to come a day like that. When I told the youngsters, one youngster came to me after the talk. He says, when is that day going to be? I said, don't worry, work hard. So the point being raised was when people work hard and they buy a car after a long time, then the neighbors and the Muslim jama'ah, Muslims, they say, I'm sure this is guy is dealing in drugs. <laughs> Have you heard that? I'm sure he's pushing drugs. But brother, on what grounds are you saying that? Are you just jealous? Did he steal your money, your wealth? Have you seen it with your eyes? Or is just a rumor you heard? The best thing is protect your mouth. Because the verse of Allah says, even if you dislike someone, even if you are jealous of them, be careful. Don't utter words that are wrong against someone. People label someone. People say, this guy's a drug addict. This guy's... Do you know that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. When you see someone buying a new house or they have a business or they have a new car, be happy for them. It's, it's very few who will actually be happy. But we need to be from amongst those few. We need to be from amongst them because the hadith says, when you are saddened, meaning you should not be saddened at the gain of your brother, nor should you be happy at the loss of your brother, because perhaps Allah might test you and help them out of that problem. Someone has a problem and I'm so delighted. It happens. Why? This guy, I don't like him. So now he's sick. He comes and he can't walk. And you say, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, you answered my dua. This guy can't walk anymore. And say, hey, how's your leg? I was telling you, stop troubling the people. You, both legs are going to go just now. Be careful. Be careful. Make, they know already that what they are doing. They know what they are in. They are already dealing with it. You just have to say, my brother, may Allah grant you shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Talk to others, say, look, no matter what, this man is this and this and this. But in this particular case, let's make dua for his shifa. You know, like the English saying goes, and even in other languages, when something really bad happens, they say, may Allah not let even my enemies see this. Have you heard that? Some people say that. The people who are good hearts, you know, who have good hearts. Otherwise, you have the other ones who are not, who don't have such a good heart. So when they were told that, you know what, whatever you ask for, that enemy of yours, the guy you don't get along with is going to get double. So he says, okay. Then he said, oh, it's going to be a tough one, this tough one. Okay, I need a mountain of gold. He got the mountain of gold and the enemy got two mountains of gold. Then he says, I need a big house and a huge you know, palace with so many rooms, everything done and so much and so much and every time someone must come and give me so much and whatever else and he got it and the neighbor got double. He says, now this is a problem, man. You see, man wants to compete. We are rich, we are wealthy. But when someone is wealthier than us, suddenly they're drugging, they're doing drugs. We're working hard, but they're doing drugs. So then he says, okay, I tell you what, scare me half to death. <laughs> scare me half to death. So, ah, you scared half to death. What happened to the friend? <laughs> Khalas, may Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. This shouldn't be the case. 
We shouldn't be so selfish. How much are you going to use? How much are you going to spend in your life? Really, if you ask a young person who's working now and perhaps the salary is 10,000 rands, a little bit less, a little bit more, they'll tell you, inshallah, my dream, first million I, I earn. Wow, you know what? I'm going to retire. The older people in society will say, hang on, by the time you earn a million, we wonder what the rate is going to be. <laughs> Especially the Zimbabweans, we know about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But man carries on and on, on and on. The point being raised, be happy at the profit of others. Be happy at other people's achievement. Don't throw people away based on a little problem that you have with them. I might have a problem with you. I might sort it out in a way that I'll become your best friend. And I might be your best friend today and I might have a problem with you. And who knows, tomorrow we may not be talking. This is why according to one narration in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, where the Prophet ﷺ says, when you love someone, love them in moderation because one day they may become your enemy. And when you hate someone, when you dislike someone, dislike them in moderation. Because one day, they may become your friends. They may become your best friends. This moderation, what does it mean? It means be careful. Don't go beyond the limits. I like you. I love you. So you know all my secrets. The day you and I have a problem, you can hold me ransom. Right? I have a problem. I was foolish. No matter how much I love you, there are limits. Certain things I don't have to, you know, let you know. The whole detail of my whole life. Come here. Let me inform you my secrets. <laughs> Come on. Same applies when you dislike someone. You don't have to swear them and burn your bridges to the degree that it's going to be embarrassing the day you want to make up with them again. You need to learn to be diplomatic to a certain extent. That diplomacy that is permissible in Islam. Because some of diplomacy is not permissible. Some people lie. Cheat, steal, deceive. And they say, no, I'm just being diplomatic. That's not it. The diplomacy is supposed to be that which is within the limits of Islam. My brother, I may dislike you, I may stay away from you, but at the, I, I know that you're a human being. Allah can create a relationship between us. I end with one verse. Allah says, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّهُ وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرُ it is very possible for Allah to create love between you and the one you hate. Because Allah is all able. That's the verse. Imagine what Allah is saying. Someone you don't like. You know, a lot of us, every one of us, we might have people whom we don't like to certain levels. Think of someone in your mind. And tell yourself, I just heard a verse where Allah says, I can create a situation whereby there will be love between you and the one you hate because I am all able. And you still have human beings saying, ah, Nikis, no way, he's not this guy. Not at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us. May Allah keep us really as brothers. With our differences, we will discuss them without swearing one another. I want to, in fact, I was going to end on that note. One more note came up in my head. You don't mind, do you? I tell you, when I don't like something you've done, something you've said, when I disagree, this can be from a religious perspective heading all the way down to something to do with a social matter. Yes, I'm, I have every right to present my opinion. But if I'm a Muslim and I'm an honorable person, I will present my opinion. I will present the evidence of it. I may present your opinion and the refutation of it. But I won't mention your name because I don't want to insult you. Remember this. I don't want to insult you. You may correct yourself. I may correct myself. But the names, what would happen? The intention becomes insulting this man. And we find this a lot on, on the globe today. And it's causing a lot of problems where people start mentioning names. This guy, he's like this because he said that. Number one, did he really say that? Number two, did he really mean what you think he meant by it? There's so much to go through it. Do you know the man personally? Have you spoken to him? Have you clarified it? The answer is no. I just heard what they were saying. I respect the man who said it. I promise you, even if I said something and you look up to me, if I've said something wrong, don't take it. If I've said something ridiculous, don't take it. You need to understand. You can ask me. You can ask me to verify. If I cannot, discount it. Discount it. No matter. We are not prophets. We are not prophets of Allah. We are perhaps, if you want to take it to the highest point, you may want to call someone a scholar of the deen. That's where it would stop. Someone who is knowledgeable. You can never say they are flawless. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm talking here today. I don't have a piece of paper. 
I don't have anything in front of me to look at. I may have made mistakes, number one, in the English language, meaning linguistic errors. Number two, a little, a few errors here and there. It's common, it's normal. Maybe not a big one. And who knows, if there was a big one, I would expect someone from amongst you to correct me. I would expect someone who hears this to email me or to contact me somehow and to present their opinion or to tell me, listen, I believe you made a mistake here. You read a verse and there was a slight discrepancy in the way you read it. Wow, Alhamdulillah, I'm a human being. I will take it because it was done with respect. The minute we become ugly, no one wants to take that correction. We create fitna, we create problems, we, we, we destroy an already fragmented ummah. Remember that. So those who build bridges are our leaders. Those who break the bridges, they will just create small groups and those groups will keep on becoming smaller and smaller because from two you'll get four and from four you get eight and from eight you get 16. And that doesn't solve the problems of the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد